Hello chess friends and welcome to Zarov's chess channel and welcome to the most important chess game of the US chess championship in 2020. It's of course the derby of the day, Wesley So versus Jeffrey Zeong. So incredible tournament for both of them because both of them after eight rounds have seven points. Both of them have played six wins and only two draws. Incredible performance by Jeffrey, incredible performance by Wesley and who wins this one will be probably the winner of the US Chess Championship. Still, I think Ray Robson can make something happen. He can maybe mix something uh, up here in the turn because he's also um, just a point behind of them. But uh, still, I think uh, who wins this because uh, there are also other criteria in this tournament. So I think with a direct win in this game, uh, really the winner has great, great chances. So let's check out now the game. Vesley had the opportunity to play uh, with the white pieces and opened with the move e4, c5, uh, played by Jeffrey, knight to f3, uh, knight to c6, d4, c takes d, knight takes d4, so far the Sicilian, knight to f6, and now knight to c3, the four knights variation, and basically black is now choosing the opening line, uh, he's cho choosing the opening, and here um, Jeffrey Theong played the move e5, it's the so-called Sveshnik of Sicilian, and Magnus Carlsen played this opening very very often in 2020, also in 2019. Uh, the main idea is of course, uh, first of all, to get this extra tempo on the knight, after knight to b5, still common theory of course, we have to play d6, because if it, we don't play the move d6, then uh, white is the one who will occupy of course this very important square, and after something like queen to d6, you would have troubles. Uh, to develop your king to secure the king by castling so that's why d6 was played and let's stop and evaluate the position immediately it's of course main theory but uh, i wanted to explain you uh, the main strategies about about this setup first of all this setup d6 e5 with his backward pawn it's the so-called boleslavsky hole that's the name of the pawn structure in the center uh, the main idea of blacks Okay, first of all, we have, of course, the weakness on d6, but we have also weak square uh, on d5. The main idea of uh, blacks is to create a restriction idea. We want to play a6, kick away the knight, and, of course, we have to allow uh, some knight outposts on d5. But what we want to do, basically, is play something like bishop to e6, or maybe take out the knight with knight to d5 and after e takes d5 we would create then a pawn majority because if we recapture with the pawn here e takes d5 then we would have i just wanted to imagine the position then after e takes d5 uh, we would have a pawn majority it means a four four versus three situation on the king side similar pawn structure like to uh, like in the king's indian so the main uh, strategy of whites here is uh, to get really this very powerful knight outpost on d5 but what we want to do is basically to get rid of any defenders of the d5 square so we want to occupy that square but we want to get rid of every defender that can protect the square and in this particular case it's of course first of all the knight on f6 and also the bishop on e6 so when we talk about positional trades of pieces what we would love to do is maybe give uh, this bishop um, up for for this knight so the bishop on c1 for the knight on f6 and we would also do, uh, love to give up our bishop to on f1 for this bishop on um on c8 so in this particular move order when we manage to do that then white will we have a very nice outpost on d5 and black would continue then uh, the game with a bad bishop that's the main strategy as i said black wants to create this pawn majority attack white wants to create this positional outpost on d5 so these are the main strategies i think they have to be explained uh i really try sometimes to explain as i said the main uh tactical threats the main strategies the main weak squares the main weak pawns in the position i think these are really uh, the most important things. And when we, when we realize that, then I think it's much more easier to understand the next couple of moves. So bishop to g5. As I said, it comes with the idea we want to get rid of a defender of, of the square d5. So that's why here a6 first, uh, still common theory. After knight to, eat, uh, knight to a3, we have b5. And okay, this move b, b4 is of course a serious threat. So that's why uh, we want to play knight to d5 or we want to take out the knight here on f6 knight to d5 uh, played by wesley so we have bishop to e7 and now comes bishop to f6 this is now our first goal we have uh we got rid of the knight which is of course defending uh here the uh, the square d5 after bishop to f6 black is continuing the game with the bishop here of course which is good but still uh this bishop is bad uh it's of course 
uh, here part of a pawn chain we can improve the bishop with bishop to g5 but the problem in this sveshnikov uh, sicilian bishop um and this bishop on f6 the dark square bishop is sometimes that even if we manage to develop it here on uh, g5 uh the main idea then of white is simply to get out of the range of the bishop we can maybe move the rook to d1 remove the knight somewhere knight to uh, maybe knight to b1 knight to uh, d2 maybe try really to find some good squares maybe even a light square on f5 so we want to get out of the range of the bishop and then the dark square bishop is basically a use, uh, useless piece so here uh, c3 was played we want to really have a good square for a knight a new square in the game bishop to g5 now comes this idea and now knight to c2 we have rook to b8 a3 uh, preventing some maybe uh, b4 pawn breakthroughs we because um, black would love to do of course to play a5 and then b4 to really track the position around the square b4 in the game counseling played by jeffrey and now we have h4 very very aggressive line here by wesley soul of course if you take bishop takes h4 uh, we have queen to h5 and uh, you lose the bishop or you get checkmated on h7 so that's why it's not an option uh, bishop to h6 had to be played and now we have g4 really really aggressive line here by wesley so we have bishop to f4 and now queen to f3 simply um moving to, uh, the queen also attacking the bishop on f4 and preparing also queenside castling because our rook could be uh then afterwards on the d file and of course we have said the main weaknesses in this so-called Boleslavsky uh, hold setup is the weak pawn on d6, but also the weak square on d5. And uh, we want to really create uh, this attacking possibilities here from White's perspective. So bishop to b7. Uh, here maybe a5 is also an option, as I said, to proceed with our idea. Okay, bishop to b7. There is also a tactical idea about this move. The queen is on f3. If something clears in the center, you see now also in the, the importance of this move by jeffrey if something clears then the queen could be also endangered we have g5 um played by wesley so and now rook to e8 we have knight takes f4 we have uh he takes f4 and now queenside castling okay here jeffrey tried really now aggressive move here you can also take here by uh by white uh, here the pawn on, on f4 but the main problem i think is uh that we can maybe liberate our knight uh, play something like knight to a4 and still continue our attack against the very very weak uh e4 pawn and the king is still in the center so that's why we should avoid it we should really first secure the king and now Be uh, jeffrey Dion plays really really an interesting idea b4 immediately so jeffrey is not losing a tempo it's not a bad move it's really a great move uh it's not a mistake uh if you think it's a mistake you see now what jeffrey has prepared here after a takes b4 we have knight to b4 a very nice knight sacrifice knight takes b4 but he finally liberated this bishop and now the bishop comes on a very very active square and the most important thing here to realize is that it's it's cutting off here the very important square b1 for the king so now there are some tactical threats with queen to a5 and queen to um a1 queen takes f4 was played by um by wesley so and now rook takes b4 you see what uh, kind of an attack here jeffrey theong has prepared if you take c takes b4 then you get really an annoying uh continuation because here after queen to c8 we have king to d2 and now the queen comes very very active into the game after king to e3 we can simply get our rook back the king is endangered after something like queen to e4 we don't have to even take first we have queen to e1 first a check and now it's time to take and it's of course game over here so uh, if you try here maybe something like rook to g1 uh after the move rook take uh, rook takes uh, b4 if you try to get out uh, here with uh, your rook on g1 it's also not so good because you get this idea as i said queen to a5 if you take then again a similar idea will happen queen takes b2 after king to e3 we have bishop to c6 now we're liberating our file for the rook the king has to move again to uh to d3 and now you see you have to bring the queen in between it's again of course a completely lost here game for white so that's why after the move rook takes b4 the only really the only good defensive move is here the bishop uh, to d3 because there is also this tension here on uh, on the fourth rank so that's why uh wesley so plays on the spinning idea we have bishop takes h1 we have queen takes b4 and now bishop to f3 rook to uh rook to d2 
Phew, really great tactics so far. Uh, the position is now much more simplified, but it's really not uh, so simple to proceed here from this point. Still, it's a complex position, I think. What we should notice here that uh, we have now a three versus three situation on the king side. It's not a problem. We have a two versus two situation on the queen side, but the main problem uh, here from white pers uh, from black's perspective, pardon me, is that these are isolated pawns. So, from an end game's perspective, this is better for white. But from a middle game's perspective, this is still better for black as the king is a little bit endangered. So, uh, still there are maybe some tactical threats against the king. So you have to be careful if you get all of the the attack of blacks. Then it's a really a good game here for white. So in the game d5, played by Jeffrey, we have bishop takes a6 by, by uh, Wesley So, which wasn't the best of moves. It was a risky choice to take this pawn, maybe something like queen to f4, simply getting our queen back after something like rook to e1, king to c2. The king is perfectly fine here. At least we have regrouped. We have now a complex position because, as I said, we shouldn't care for pawns now. We have to solve all... First, our uh, tactical problems around the king after something like bishop to h5. Now, maybe trying to move, move, uh, move the pawn to b4 and cement our position with queen to d4. Then the position is much more fixed, much more uh, compact. And now it's time to play on. Maybe then afterwards to try to take out this pawn on h a6. But after move bishop to a6, it gives now opportunities here. Uh, for Jeffrey to counterplay, we want to break the pawn chain that uh, White has built here. After move G takes H6, we have Rook to E4. Great move here by Jeffrey. Uh, queen to uh, C5. And now comes a really a mistake here by Jeffrey. He played the move Rook takes H4. A better idea, and it leads now, I think, into a forced drawish line, is Rook to E1 immediately. Uh, because after King to C2, we can take out now with the Queen. And after something like... Uh, queen to c8 first to check king to h7 you could uh, do some checks and now you see after the move queen takes f3 now comes the stunner queen takes uh, queen to a4 we can get our queen back and now basically the only thing that white can do is hope for some perpetuals after king to c2 again some checks and this is now i think a forced drawish line which unfortunately for, for jeffrey he missed so he took with the rook the evaluation is Slightly better here for white. It's not a problem that this move is losing, but there are now also some tactical threats. Uh, you see, the king is already at, uh, in the endangered here. Uh, white has also made some progress, so the, there are no not so many pawns in front of uh, black's king. So we can also create some dangerous checks in the game. Queen to c8 here by uh, Vesli So he's trying to simplify the position. After rook takes h6, we have now bishop to b7, and again we should stop and evaluate now this endgame the problem is now the d5 move that jeffrey's dion has played the pawn is on life square and that's what i always meant about this relation uh, between bishops and pawns whenever you have a life square bishop you want to have um your pawns on opposite colors because then your bishop is moving much more freely you see now the bishop on f3 is simply stuck uh, to the defense of the pawn on d5 and First of all, which we should also also that uh, here White has created the pass pawn situation. So now we should really try to push this pawn further. We have Rook to H5, B4. We have King to F8. Jeffrey has to play, of course, with the King. King to B3, King to E7. We have King to A4. We have also now uh, our opportunity maybe to create here a pass pawn because we have a two versus one situation on the King side. We have B5 and now Rook to F4. King to a5, king to d6, and now b6, rook to c4, and now rook to d3, attacking the bishop. We have rook to c5, first to check, king to b4, and now rook to c4. Okay, after king to b3, here I think uh, Jeffrey solved uh, his uh, positional problems. This should be probably a draw. After rook to f4, uh, here uh, c3, uh, c4 was played, which still is not a problem because... You have the opportunity to move your with your king and after c takes d5 we have rook to uh, b4 uh, uh, king to c3 and now comes i think the critical moment of this game so okay pause the video and try now to find really the, the best continuation uh, here for black uh, it's really not so easy to see but you see how the end game can be really a complex stage of the chess game I really hate this kind of uh, endgame because I would lose it for sure here from Black's perspective. Uh, 
it, you have to be so accurate in these types of endgame. So please take your time, uh, check out this endgame, try to really see now the best continuation in order to not lose this game from Black's perspective. So as usual, we I love, love the sound. So test your, test mind. your mind. Try to see now a line that's not losing, as I said. Okay. The idea of uh, of White's here is that White wants uh, Black to take here the pawn on the b6, which Jeffrey De Jong unfortunately did, because you see now the problems after the move rook takes b6. The main idea is here bishop to e4, attacking first the rook. Now uh, Black, White can push the pawn, that's the main issue here. The problem is now that we can simply push the pawn further, you don't have so much time to take out, to, to take out this rook. After potential bishop to d3, we can move this pawn further and now after rook to uh, c4 attacking the king we have the opportunity to, to go back with our king but now after uh, rook to b4 we have king to a3 and now rook to d4 again attacking the pawn now comes the stunner but it's not a problem it's still i think a draw because here white can play a very aggressive bishop to d5 and uh, the problem is now after rook to d5 we would create another pass pawn but still it's not a problem here it's a still a draw because we can take we can play king to c6 and after something like promotion we can now take this pawn and the most uh, the problem for white here is that black will build the fortress probably building something like bishop to g6 semantic then the rook on f5 and simply go with our king back and the white cannot attack this position just uh, with the queen we have a two versus one situation so also white can never create a pass pawn situation and this would be probably a draw but let's go back after the move king to c3 here jeffrey zion took the pawn so as i said bishop to e4 much much better it would be probably a draw after rook to b6 you see now the tactical threat now uh Vesle so moves simply to pawn further sacrificing the bishop but now this pawn moves further you have to give up uh, your rook for the pawn and now we have reached we have reached an end game in which okay why uh, black has bishop bishop and two pawns against the rook and the pawn but the problem is now still uh this is not a compact position the king is too far away if the king would have been somewhere here maybe on the king side then maybe again black could build a fortress with the bishops and uh, with the bishop and these two pawns but the king is too far away the most important thing is that the rook has cut off uh, uh the connection between the king and the other pieces on the board here f5 we have king to d3 you see the um, west souls rook can uh, pardon me king uh, can play much more freely in the game bishop to e4 king to e3 we have uh, g4 we have king to f4 king to c6 and now rook to f7 after uh, king to d6 here after the move rook takes f5 in this position uh, jeffrey is young resigned what's the problem about this position you see now after bishop to f5 we can take and whatever you do uh, you see if you try uh, to play something like i don't know king to e7 we'll simply take out the pawn on g4 and the problem is now if you move here to maybe uh, f7 or maybe here to f6 let's see uh, king to f7 white is going into the so-called opposition and whenever white reaches this types of opposition so it means when we have this parallel setup between the kings with only one square uh bet in between them then it's of course a winning end game here for white so even in this position if you try as i said king to f7 or king to d6 will simply go into the opposition but even if black tries here maybe a king to e6 move it's not a problem we can simply play king to g5 and now if black wants to go into the opposition we can play a sort of a zugzwang with the move f3 again forcing black to make a move after move king to uh, uh, e6 we can move the pawn further and after something like uh, king to e7 king to g6 again if you go into an opposition it's not a problem we'll simply push the pawn further but now whatever you do you see we can simply move the uh, after move king to e8 we can simply move the pawn further and now if you try uh, here the move king to f8 now it's again our time to go into an opposition and it's of course a completely winning end game here for for white so as said let's go back uh, after the move rook takes f5 nice tactic nice end game tactic here by Wesley so uh, in this position uh, Jeffrey Zion resigned so phew, incredible game we see the ups and downs uh, but uh, great great tactics i think in this game uh, great motifs end game motifs middle game motifs great great 
uh, played by both of them. It's of course a rapid, a rapid game. You can make really inaccuracies, mistakes, but I still think this was really an incredible game with great play all over the board. A really a dynamic game from move one and uh, best is so one now this game he is now really the favorite to win this uh, incredible incredible performance by Wesley without the loss only two draws and now it's the seventh win of Wesley so if this would have been counted for ratings I think Wesley would have gained during this particular tournament already like I don't know maybe 25 30 rating points in rapid chess but unfortunately this uh, this um, over uh, this online chess games are not rated so it's a it's i think a bad bad decision but uh as simple as that uh, it's a problem now with this online chess tournament that um it's simply the only chess that we can see now these days because over the board chess is of course not possible uh, due to this virus situation so okay uh, i hope that you enjoyed this game it was really a clash of titans i think incredible game by both of them if you want to see more games from this uh, US Chess Championship, here's the link. And if you want to see maybe the best chess games of all time series, uh, here's also the link with uh, like 100 uh, my uh, sorted out my uh, chess games that I think that should, you should really see in chess history. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.